Hello Dragon Wisps, welcome to today's video. I'm Joseph, also known as the Dragon Whisperer. Today I'm going to be doing another character creation video. I'm going to be creating a Dwarven Cleric. Um, there's going to be a back, you know, a bit of a background story to this character. Um, just for a little extra added fun at the end. Um, so I'm going to create the character, and then throw together a background story at the end of the video. So I hope you stay tuned for that. Um, as always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel with that little button down there if you haven't yet, so that you can become a Dragon Wisp. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you can stay up to date when videos get up uh, uploaded or if I go live. And also, um, if you'd like to support the channel more directly, I've got the Patreon and shop links in the description below, as well as the Discord link if you would like to join the Discord channel. Um, you, uh, it's the easiest way to get a hold of me. We can chat and all that. Um, I've got an area for requesting and suggesting videos, Dungeons and Dragons section, um, where we're going to be doing. I've got a few Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons se uh, sections. I've got. Uh, one uh, room specifically for just like general discussion, uh, one for a text-based game, and then one for a voice uh, chat game, um, which, you know, uh, will be used more frequently for like battles and stuff, like stuff that's more time sensitive. Um, but, you know, if you'd like to check that out, like I said, the link is down below, right down there. Alright, so without any further ado, Sit back, relax, and enjoy another character creation. As always, we're going to pull out our character sheets. Now, as I have stated before, there are a few house rules we use when creating our characters. I mean, there's obviously more house rules, but these are the ones that are going to apply to the character. We roll 5d6 and drop the lowest for our ability scores. And we get maximum gold for the character class to buy equipment. Of course, if uh, not all that gold gets spent, any extra gold is bye-bye. Bye-bye. Alright, so first things first, we're going to fill this in. We've got Cleric, level 1, Dwarf, okay, Player, details after. So what am I doing? Let's figure out our ability score using, as always, the, s the heavy skull dice. These things, these things really are heavy. A lot heavier than regular dice. Not as heavy as dwarven dice though, which I do want to set up. Now, let's see, our first roll is a 17. Very nice. What do we have? Second. Take the lowest out. We have 22. That is a nice roll. That's going to go into a dump stat. I'm pretty sure it's intelligence. Sixteen. 
And last roll, let's make it count. Yeah, we made it count. 22. So we got two abilities at 22. That's nice. So now they go. Dice go back into the dragon bag. Let's do our dwarven race abilities. Hair on here. Okay. Dwarves have plus two constitution, but minus two charisma. Sized. Speed is 20 feet. Now, fortunately, with dwarves, even if they're wearing heavy armor, their speed stays at 20 feet. That's why dwarves tend to be like the fighter of the group, or it's in this instance, the cleric. Okay, they have dark vision, which means. In the pitch black, they can see up to 60 feet. Which doesn't seem like a lot at first until you, you know, stop to realize how big 60 feet actually is. squares on the map or grid depending on how you look at it so we got stone cunning which gives our dwarf a plus two racial bonus on search checks to notice unusual stonework such as sliding walls stonework traps new construction even when built in to match the old unsafe stone surfaces shaky stone ceilings and the like the like. Okay. A dwarf who merely comes in within 10 feet of unusual stonework can make a search check as if he were actively searching. And a dwarf can use a search skill to find stonework traps as a rogue can. Cool. And then we've got weapon familiarity. Dwarven. Which is your Dwarven War Axe and your Dwarven Urgosh. Urgrush. Stability. They're very stable and get a plus four on... Where did it go? Ability checks made to resist being bull rushed or tripped when standing on the ground. But they have to be standing firmly on the ground. They can't be like half on the ground or anything like that. Plus two racial bonus on saving throws against poison, which will go into our fortitude. Plus two versus poison. Plus one racial bonus against orcs and goblins. So that's fun. Um, plus two on saving throws against spells and spell-like effects. Plus two versus spells. Plus four armor bonus against giant type. Plus two racial bonus on appraise checks related to stone or metal items. So that's fun. Plus two racial bonus on craft checks that are related to stone or metal. There we go. Automatic languages, common and dwarven. As I stated in the Elven Ranger video, I do apologize that everything's upside down. I couldn't comfortably get a good camera angle right side up, so I'm going to be flipping the video, uh, possibly. If I did flip the video, then 
you know, disregard that message. Now we move on to the cleric class skill, or class chart. Oh, it's chosen. Okay. So the abilities we're going to want to focus on are wisdom, constitution, and charisma. Wisdom affects how powerful the spells are and how many spells the cleric can cast per day. Constitution improves their hit points, which is very important because your cleric is basically your frontline band-aid. I mean, you put the clerics in the middle mostly so that they can run to the front and the back lines, but they need to be ready and uh, to take their own hits. And charisma affects their ability to turn undead, or in some cases, rebuke undead. Boom, boom, boom. But no. Oh, uh, yeah, this cleric's not going to be an evil cleric, though. I know, boring, but I just don't want it to be. Alright, so we want Wisdom, Constitution, and Charisma. Unfortunately, Charisma takes a hit, so we're going to put the 22, one of the 22s into Charisma to make it a 20. We'll put the 18 in Constitution to make it a 20. Put 22 into Wisdom to make it a 22. Strength, we'll put 17. Dexterity, uh, let's put 16 in Dexterity, why not? And 13 into intelligence. 3, 3, 5, 2, 6, 5. Right. Not bad at all. Hit points 1d8, so 13 hit points for the Dwarven Cleric. Not bad. Not bad at all. Zero attack bonus. The ability to turn undead. Now for those that don't know, uh, turning undead effectively, depending upon your role, um, you have your base, like if, you, if you've got a bit of a lower role, it just, it frightens the undead, you know, scares them away, turns them away. However, if you have a strong enough role or the, the correct feat, or uh, domain for some uh, uh, for clerics. Instead of turning the undead, you destroy them, which is obviously the real desired result. But let's face it, you don't always get that way, right? Anyway. Continuing right along, let's see, we've got spells per day. Three zero level spells, or cantrips. One first level spell, plus one for the domain spell. I'm not gonna write the domain spell, like, I'm not gonna write the spells into here, like this tiny list. This is one thing that I didn't like with the 3.5 is you're given such a small area to write your spells in. However, there have been several homebrewed pages that create their own spell list. I might even just type out spells later. I, don't, I haven't decided yet. But, bonus spells based on our wisdom score, which is a 22, we get two bonus first level spells. Yay! Okay, our weapon and armor proficiency. We're proficient in simple weapons and all types of armor and with all shields except for tower shields. Every deity has a favored weapon and his or her clerics considered a point of pride to wield that weapon. A cleric who chooses the war domain receives the weapon focus feat related to the weapon as a bonus feat. 
also receives the appropriate martial weapon proficiency feat as a bonus feat if the weapon falls into that category. Okay. Alright, skill points. Let's see the skill points we've got to work with. 2 plus intelligence modifier, 4. Times 4 at character creation, though. Let's see, our class skills are... Concentration, Craft, Diplomacy. Heal. Knowledge, Arcane, Arcana. Knowledge, Religion. Knowledge, History. Knowledge, The Plains. Wow. History. Plains. Religion. Okay. Profession and spellcraft. Profession, personally, is something I don't usually put skill points in because why? You know? Uh, foreign to heal, diplomacy, because we must spread the word of our deity and then we'll put two into each of the knowledges because like I had stated before when it comes to character creation I like to just max out as many skills as I can and put skill points into the knowledges because you never know when that's going to come into play in this situation we go with diplomacy and heal because our cleric want our cleric needs to heal the party diplomacy because we need to be diplomatic we need to spread the word of of our deity we need to convince people that we're not there to you know just murder them all we don't want to do that we do not want to do that we put, we, we, we put those players in their own games off on their own That's our skills. Not a lot going on with that as far as the cleric goes. So let's move on to our feet. We've got a left one, a right one, and now we're going to have one extra. Sorry, a little bit of humor. Okay. I think in this case, we're going to go with Improved Turning. Because we want our Cleric to be ready. So that's our feet. As stated before, we get one feet based on our race. If we were a human, we would get two feats. If we were a human fighter, we would have three feats. Because fighters get a bonus feat instead of, you know, the usual class skills or class abilities. All right. Deity. We're gonna worship Cord. I know, I'm not a dwarf, not a dwarven god, but I'm not a dwarven deity, but I don't feel like worshipping Moradin. That would be too g generic of a dwarven cleric. So We're going to be neutral good, worshipping Kord. Kord is a chaotic good deity but that's okay we can be within one step on the alignment chart of our deity uh, cleric's gonna be a male we move over here to our other descriptions let's see for a cleric wow we're gonna need 7d6 for our age 
So not only are we going to use the D6s, I got a full house. We're going to use D6s from a couple of other sets as well. starts at 40 years and we add 7d6 to determine its age as a cleric. Okay, well we got three ones in there so that's going to be relatively younger. So 10, 21. Alright, so 61 is the age our dwarf is. Two D four, so we only need two D six again. So we'll put these ones away. We'll grab a couple D fours. Foot nine. We add three. So our dwarf is four feet tall. Nine times three, twenty seven, and weighs one hundred and fifty seven pounds. strength and constitution. Our dwarven cleric is a hearty, stout fellow. Okay, so eyes. They're going to be green eyes, which is going to be unusual. Brown hair, just brown, plain brown. He's going to be pale because He's, he's, a, he's a dwarf, he li lives generally in the mountainous areas. And I mean in the mountainous areas. Let's see, what's his name going to be? His name... We're going to call him... Brumen... Lightning Fist. Yes. I like how that is. Yeah, that's. I like how that worked out. Okay, so I'll we should probably put a dexterity modifier for initiative. I didn't do that on the previous. Oh, well. deal with that after. Okay, our gold. We start with. 5d4 times 10, which as I stated before, we start with maximum, so that's 200 gold for our dwarf to get his equipment. Let's see, he's going to use a dwarven war axe. D10 plus 3 for damage. That's a 3 on the attack roll. The critical is times 3 if we can confirm a crit. And the type is slashing. Next, that costs 30 gold out of our 200. Then we move to our armor. Our dexterity is 3, so let's work with that. 
blue scale mail. Type is medium. The armor bonus we get is a plus four. Maximum dexterity is plus three, which works with our dexterity. The armor check penalty is a minus four, so you know, we're not gonna try. We're not gonna do any swimming or anything. Spell arcane spell failure doesn't apply to this character because uh, he is a divine caster. The speed is going to remain at 20 feet rather than dropping to 15 feet. The weight is 30 pounds. Now, the war axe is a one handed weapon, so we can also get a shield. We have a heavy steel shield. giving us another two to our armor class. Weight is 15 pounds. Armor check penalty is another minus two. And again, we're not worried about the spell failure because not arcane. So that's 70, so we spent 100 of our gold so far, which brings us over to here where we're going to get our various other possessions. Clerics need to have a holy symbol of their god, obviously, their deity. And ours is going to have a silver one. He's classy cleric. No silly wooden holy symbol for him which costs us 25 gold, which leaves us with 75. Um, he's got his backpack and traveler's outfit, which, as stated before, um, as a house rule, we allow one backpack and traveler's outfit f uh, to be standard equipment on the characters. Um, However, anything extra needs to be purchased. Let's see here. Something good for our cleric. Two flasks of holy water. Because cleric. Leaving us with 25 more gold. And I'm going to be honest, I usually spend a lot more time looking at equipment. Tent for 10, leaving us with 15, just because, you know, usually you want to put a lot of work into your, into your equipment, but then it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like it today, you know, putting a lot of work into it. Manacles. Because sometimes you want to ask questions. Alright. So that is that. Combat. Ah, magic. There we go. Need to choose a domain for my cleric. A domain in the chord list, which is chaos. Good. Strength. I think there was another one, wasn't there? Hang on, let's go back to 
forward. Chaos, good luck and strength. Why does Cord have luck? That's weird. Good fortune. Okay. Reroll one roll once per day. Ooh. And if we go with strength. I think I'm gonna go with strength. choosing spells that's done per day so it's not too much of a concern let's see yeah I'm not gonna worry about spells so languages We've got a plus two in intelligence, so we get to choose two languages. We're going to choose Draconic, because I like Draconic. And... Let's do Elven. Which I know isn't always... big. Alright, let's see. Armor bonus. Four, shield bonus of two, max dexterity. We'll go about, puts us at 19 AC, 16 flat footed, 13 touch. Then we'll quickly fill in the ability modifiers. Two, three, five, three, five, two, 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 five, two, five, three, two, five, five, six, he he he, three, five, three, two, 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 six, three, three, five, five, five. Six and six, three, two, six, three, two, six, six, three, three, five, and three. Our knowledge checks are going to be a four. Heal is a ten. Diplomacy is a nine. There we go. Uh, I think everything is filled out that needs to be. So there we have it. Brumen Lightning Fist. So I said I was going to do a backstory for Brumen Lightning Fist, so here we go. Um, I'm going to pull the whole one just out of the air. So Brumen Lightning Fist was adopted into a long line of clerics um, and is a direct descendant. Well, not direct descendant, a descendant by adoption in the family of Etria Lightning Fist, one of the earlier clerics of Cord in the Storm uh, Stormreach Kingdom. Um, Etria was uh, taken in by um, Dark Sun Incorporated, but that's that's a different story that's completely unrelated to this right now. Um, Bruman was found. Uh, wandering the mountain as a child uh, where a an attack had taken place by a nearby orc settlement um, and taken into the family by Ardvar Lightning Fist. Sure, we'll go with that. Who is a direct descendant of Etria and uh, well, Farkle Lightning Fist, but or Far Farkle Hilltopple? The uh, family had taken the name back as Lightning Fist, 
um, a little bit down the line so that they could continue the cleric side of things rather than the hilltopple uh, side which again is going to be a another story um, <clears throat> anyway uh, so Bruman now travels the land spreading the word of Kord the god of strength trying to increase the followers after almost being entirely devastated by the destruction of Stormreach. Um, etched into his war axe is the family name as well as the family symbol of the Hilltopples and Lightning Fist family line. Um, having a particular disdain for the undead, Bruman learned to better dispose of the blight that was slowly creeping across the land, and there, from there decided that he was going to do whatever he could to completely wipe them off the, the face of the planet. Obviously, um, as any cleric knows, one can't do this by themselves. So, Bruman has tried time and again to join groups of adventurers as they attempt to also eradicate the undead threat. I can't really think of anything else past that. I'm, I mean, he was sh shunned as, for being a dwarf with green eyes. That was viewed as extremely irregular. Yeah. So, that's about that. I mean, I can't really think of anything else to throw in there. Except he carries his vials of holy water for in case he needs them against, again, the undead scourge. Alright. So, there we go. It's a little back backstory for Bruman Lightning Fist. Thank you for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be doing more character creations, definitely, because apparently it's uh, something that's wanted on the channel. Um, so if you have any ideas for characters that you would like to see created, uh, feel free to comment below. And for the most part, they don't even have to be like basic characters. They don't have to be level one characters. They can be like monster class, monster races, and everything um, that require level adjustment, because you know, it's just, I, as easy as a level one character is, I do like to create higher level characters as well, because there's so much more to work with, especially equipment wise. Um, plus, you know, they don't. If you're creating the character at a higher level, it doesn't require a lot of planning to get to that point. Um, a lot of, for example, if you want to do a prestige class, you need to plan ahead um, a character creation. But anyway, like I said, feel free to comment that below. You can also comment other videos you'd like to see on the channel below. Um, I, I definitely like to, you know, do the do, do requested videos because it's, you know it's it's fun, and then you know I'm giving you what you got. I give you guys what you want. <laughs> okay, so. Um, yeah, that's that for that video. So, sit back. No, not sit back. What am I saying? Right about now, you should be getting a subscribe button up in this corner. Over in this corner will be the latest video on the channel. Down here, we've got a video recommended for you by YouTube. And over here is going to be a playlist of character creation videos. So, thank you for joining me. And as always, have a peaceful day. Bye.